What's up, dogs and all gets? Welcome back to Black and Low with Rock Dog 25. A little bit different here. We're not actually doing a gameplay, but we are in a game. We're all by our lonesome, you can see. Just Hark Dog in here as Mr. Toretto. Now, a while back, people asked for some tips and tricks gameplays for people that are new to the game. Um, honestly, I don't know why you want them from me. I'm not the best player for that, but I'm going to do my best. Uh, so. My best player, obviously, is Mr. Toretto here. Um, so I spent time. I cut down this back wall. Usually this cut takes about two minutes uh, with two people. It took me about four minutes by myself. Uh, it gives you like a thousand some bricks. I just maxed my bricks out at 15,000 for this episode. Uh, just so I don't have to worry about getting bricks all the time. So typically what I like to do. Now this is ball work, but you can do this on most maps. Um, especially maps that... Um, you can't go that far underground like you can't go too deep because of water Sometimes you can't go deep because of lava or it's on a pedestal uh, for those pesky Asterellas are in there um, And mainly those pesky genies now the genie has 11 blocks wide jinx and the genie can be very detrimental to uh, Mr. Toretto, so yeah, I think it's 11 blocks. So it's 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 so the Jinx is this radius, which is pretty huge, actually. It's pretty huge. Now, I notice uh, playing a lot of people that are new to the game. Um, they end up, okay, well, gee, I got to place a couple turrets. So I'll see, I'll put one here facing down the line. This is what I used to do originally. And uh, you don't see any of the, the pro players do this. All right, so you try and plant one in each corner. Like so. And obviously that is inside of the 11 brick range so if genie comes over she just you know she throws up one of her bricks right here like that oh glitch comes up jumps and goes like this boom hits f right there these two turrets are now taken over by your jinx and you're gonna be shooting your defenders and you're gonna take them out so you try to want to keep your turrets spaced out as much as possible so keep them I try and keep uh, like 12, 13 blocks, but you also want to keep a line of sight between them as well because now with the reaction time and uh, they used to be instantaneous. Like someone would come over the wall, they start shooting instantaneous. Now it's like a quarter second or a half second reaction time, so they're not hitting you right away. So when one engages, you want another to engage. You want two, two, three, as many as you can on one target to take that target down before they take out your turrets or take out your cube. Um, and most of the times you can block it in. Um, and blocking it in is good. Usually you only want to keep one layer. You want to keep the edges off. You put like a fire trap there or something like that. Um, just so they, they don't uh, dig in without uh, getting some sort of damage. Now if you got a shinobi that comes in and he's like way up there and he runs and he, he throws a smoke bomb and he lands on top and ducks down. This turret may be able to hit. This turret may be hitting him. But if it's blocked in... Oh, hold on. Come on now. There we go. Wow. The lag's real. Even in a one-man game. So if he blocks down... Say he's right there. That one might be able to hit him. You gotta think if there's another brick here. He's like this. Can't get hit. Swipe it away. And he's taking out your defense. So... Always want to keep some sort of defense on top, or if you can, and that's what I like to do on this map, uh, especially. Um, I know it's close to the wall, but having a turret right here that can aim at the top of the cube, and it's still outside of that 11 brick range, so we got three there. Um, so you can, so if the shinobi comes in, he's hammering away, he's getting shot. You know, I can come over. Okay, well, where is he? All right, well, he's right here. Boom, 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 boom. Hit him three times. You know, plus the turret, he's probably going to be dead. Or he's going to smoke bomb out. Make sure you drill that smoke bomb so it doesn't blow up and destroy whatever defenses you have up here, whatever extra cubes you have. Um, uh, 69, that's funny. Um, yeah, and I like to get at least four turrets up. Now, these are spaced in a way right now where if I put one anywhere in here... There's going to be two that are going to be under the influence of the Jinx. Um, and they lose line of sight of each other. So that back one can't see this one right here. So you have three turrets. 
I mean, it'd be nice if you had all of them facing, but what you can do is you can get something like this, where you get rid of this one, and you set this one out over here. He's like way out, you know, you kind of tuck him in here, like so. They got our abilities. Uh, I thought I put down the build time, but the build time is actually like how much time you have to build before the match starts. You know, and just, just in case someone comes around the outside, he's getting shot from here. Um, usually I like to keep it defended on this side. So a shinobi can't throw something or a sarge can't rock it or shoot it out from back there. So he's just aiming this way. So he's got a line of sight right there, right there. And then if you want, you know, just put something up here. You know, it's probably close to 11 bricks. That's maybe close. Um, sometimes you can't win them all, but especially on a confined space like um, the... Prifidana's, Prifidina's map where you're up at that first cube and it's just a big platform up in the air. It's hard to get four that are not near the edge that are protected that are going to be you know firing. So this one's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It is eleven bricks away which is nice. Uh, as far as diagonal I don't think this is going to be one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah it's probably eight away so the genie could theoretically come over hit the F right here have those two going, and then start drilling into the base here. But that's why you get the fire traps here, even though that would be taken over. But you got to think, if she came over, hit the F, this might explode before she hits the F, put some damage on her, and then she tries to block herself in, and then you know, you're able to you know, ha kill her in less shots, and she doesn't do that much damage to the cube. Um, so that's generally what I try and do. I also do a lot of uh, hidden traps. Where someone's running along, especially around this outside here on ball work. Because you know they're going to try and come around the outside. Uh, and that's why I usually drill out. So you can't jump around like that, even though I just did it. <laughs> Never mind, you can jump around. Um, but you got to go out like two bricks or just you know go something like that. And just fill this in. So they can't jump around. Um, obviously a shinobi won't matter that much. And if this is only two and a half tall here they can just jump right over but if they jump right over they're heading into the heart of your defense anyways uh, but if they do come around and I kill a lot of shinobis back here that are just running around behind the base trying to escape trying to buy time trying to be a nuisance and then you know you do you do you do you do, you do boom and they're dead I have a few gameplays like that where they just I think I kill like f the same person four or five times over and over with the same with the same like three or four traps back here because they like going up there like placing their spawn up there because it's high, they can hit this turret right there with uh, their shurikens, um, and maybe hit the other ones as well. But I mean, you can always put a backdrop on here and make sure they're protected, you know, like so, and like so, you know. So it'd take a little bit more of an effort for them to get through. Now, obviously, sweet science—it's the same thing. When they come in, when a sweet science comes in with his meteor. Um, He's going to come in, he's going to slam the F ability, you know, put an EMP pulse out there. He's going to destroy one turret. He's going to try and go after another one. Uh, he's going to try and disable all your defenses. And if your cube is down to, you know, one or two hits, there's nothing really you can do. Um, but spacing them out allows that meteor to only affect one or two turrets at the most. And, you know, if he destroys two of them and you have a good brick base, uh, like you have, like me, you have 9,000 bricks left. You know, that's fine. You know, you can just hit your F ability and slam up, you know, two more pretty easily after you kill them. Um, health and ammo. On this map, they give you the health and an ammo. I'd actually add another ammo here, but I'd put a health here. So there's usually two there. And those are easy for teams to go after. Uh, one one usually I do if you can, you know, try one. Yeah, let's put an F ability here. Try and put one up here. At the start of your match especially if you have a scientist that wants to attack um, here she can get obviously a bunch of health Ugh, this leg is real but she can also just throw smoke grenades and that is big key on this map because you can just chuck the nades there's only a few little areas you can come from here so yeah you keep everything in front of you on this map and it's it makes a little bit easier I mean I Probably win 70 to 80 percent of my matches on this map um, just by keeping everybody in front of you and keeping everything linear if you get to start attacking from all sides or they're able to come around this side 
come around that side, you know, I mean, I've had some matches where, you know, they place like two or three huge TNT bombs in here and just blow up everything in the front. And you're kind of screwed. I mean, this thing is obviously made of steel left on the pillar. Um, and it, it becomes very tough to defend. And I've been on the other side where I'm out there where I'm just, you know, throwing cogwheel barrages for 20 minutes at their first cube from underneath their base. And there's just nothing but a pillar. But unfortunately, when you leave it on an island like that, when you attack, you are on an island as well. And they can normally pick you off. So you got to go in groups for sure. Um, trying to think what else. Yeah, okay, so health and ammo. Usually I put one there. I put one back here. Now, you can space them around. You don't have to put it exactly right here because if everybody puts it right here, everybody's going to know that, oh, look, he must have watched Hark Dog's video. There's got to be a health and ammo right there because I can... I see two bricks on top like that. Oh, there's got to be. So, I mean, sometimes I just... I line a whole area with bricks as well. You know, just... You know, and you could set them out out here. You know, I just, just kind of fool them a little bit if you need to. But I always like to put one in back because you know they're going to be coming from back. So you, stop, you come up here. You know, he's coming. Boom, boom, boom. You know, he hits you a couple times with like, uh, you know, Sarge is back there. Hits you with a rocket. You shoot a couple times. Drop back down here. Reload. Get a few bites of health. Come back up. You know, hopefully you can hit the hit an alt and be like, help, help. Enemy objective, you know, or friendly objective. And then they'll come back and help you. And then you can kind of swarm. Because defending just on your own is pretty tough, especially when your turrets are starting to go down and your brick count is starting to go down. So keeping your brick count up, especially oh, so as wait. you are defending. If they're attacking and the enemy cubes under attack, you can be sure that there's gonna it's gonna draw their defenders into that. And you know, basically, I just keep just keep grinding out back here, just as much as you can, especially the dirt and the sand. The sand is like the easiest to go through for sure. You know, just keep going. You know, keep your eye on the radar at all times. You know, oh crap, there's a guy coming across the middle. Hopefully, you got some radars out there, and then you you get set up for him if you know someone's gonna jump over here or whatnot. So, um, so yeah, I think in summation, you want to keep good spread on your turrets. You want to get some height on your turrets as well, just in case they start attacking the cube. And I have been known to, um, especially on this map, that you just come up and. You throw a turret on top because they're going to come over the top right after you. you know, and you brick that in. Hey, don't worry about it. I'm trying to teach people stuff here. Ah, man. Sometimes it just doesn't recognize when you're lagging. Uh, uh, no, 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 no. I can't, br I can't put it in there. See that? Ha, there we go. Uh, and I usually surround it with fire trapper too, especially since you know you do that, it creates the fire here. So and when that happens, wherever the fire isn't, you know, I quick put up another one like that. And so if they come over, especially shinobis, uh, they're gonna come diving in. It's like oh, uh, boom, get shot, get shot from there, get shot from there, and it's usually they're dead in about two seconds. Um, so I guess that would be. Just a quick little Toretto tutorial here, and this, like I said, it doesn't have to be pertain to ball work here. It can, you know, beach base, block 101. Well, block 101, I mean, ter being a Toretto on that map is uh, not good because you can just get rained down from above with everything. Uh, usually, you want to be a scientist on that map that is a little bit better. Um, yeah, and let me know if you guys like these videos. Um, I'll do a quick, like, little noob tutorial for each character i'll try and do as best as i can for the characters i'm not good at like nigel and sweet science and stuff like that i mean i play them i've had good games with them but i've also had very bad games where i just especially sweet science i kill myself so much i can't do the lava poles for beans especially you know with my leg usually i mean my ping's at 320 right now it's a little bit tough for me so um but yeah let me know what you think and if you have any tips to add to this, definitely leave in the comments below so uh, people that watch this video can, you know, just learn. Just learn from, you know, the guys that have played, you know, a couple thousand hours like that. I I have not. I've only played probably four to five hundred hours, which is a lot for me. Um, but, you know, some of the people like Whale in a Box have like, you know, three thousand hours or something like that alone is pretty ridiculous. So... 
Um, yeah, we'll see you next time, and let me know what uh, character you want me to do next. Okay, take care. What's up, dogs and doggettes? Thank you so much for watching this amazing block and load gameplay. If you enjoyed that one, maybe you'll enjoy some of the gameplays from my beta playlist or from the release playlist. And if you have not done so already, hit the subscribe button for me. It'll make me feel all warm and fuzzy. Tony Toretto style.